D.L. Moody once said, he who kneels the most stands the best. I think we all can attest to the fact that the more we as Christians pray to God, the better we are able to stand to live our lives in ways that glorify God. This is not only true as we pray to God for ourselves personally, it is also true as we pray to God on behalf of one another. If we are to stand best in our relationship as brothers and sisters in Christ, then we need to pray for one another on a regular basis. Yes, sir. Yes. If you're like me, and we'll be honest today, this is we told this last week, tell the truth, right? When we talk to each other, there are times where it's easy to pray for myself. Yeah. I have no problems praying for people that are in my circle, in my sphere, praying for my wife, praying for our daughters. But but where it can get challenging is to intentionally pray for your other brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah, yeah. People that are not in your biological yes. family. Yes. So the Bible tells us that part of being the family of God is that we have to learn to pray yes, sir. for one another. Yes. All of us stand in the need of prayer. Not just you praying for yourself, but we all stand in the need for others to pray for us. Yes, sir. I mean, the Bible is full of examples of people praying for others. Moses prayed for the people of Israel. Yes. Job prayed for his three friends. Come on, man. The Spirit, the Bible says, intercedes for us. Yes, sir. Yes. When we don't know what to pray for. Yes, sir. And then, of course, Jesus yes. prayed for us. Yes, sir. Yes. John chapter 17. And even as a part of his present high priestly work in our lives currently, yes. he intercedes for us on a daily basis. Yes, sir. So praying for one another uh, is a part, and par and a part and parcel of what it means to be the people of God. Yes, sir. We're in good company yes, sir. when we pray for one another. We are living and acting like Christ when we pray for one another. Charles Haddon Spurgeon had this to say about intercessory prayer. He wrote, intercessory prayer is exceedingly prevalent. What wonders it has wrought. The word of God teems with its marvelous deeds. He continues, believer, thou hast a mighty engine in thy hand. Speaking of intercessory prayer, use it well. Use it constantly. Use it with faith. And thou shalt surely be a benefactor to thy brethren yes. Yes. and sisters. If we desire to be a benefit or of help to one another as brothers and sisters in Christ, then we need to pray for one another. Did you hear that? Praying for one another is helpful because we are praying to our God who is a helper. Yes, sir. Yes. And sometimes prayer gets a bad rap in these American streets. It gets a bad rap when tragedy strikes and we, as Christians, we, we, we tell people, we post, we're praying for you. And people say, you can keep your prayers because your prayers ain't doing nothing for me. Truth is, that's not true. Because Prayers are helpful because we're praying to a God who helps us. Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes into the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord yes, sir. Yes. who made heaven and earth. So don't, don't let nobody harvest discourage you from praying for one another and praying for others as if your prayers don't work. Your prayers are working because yes, you're seeking a God who is able to intercede on their behalf. Yes, sir. He's God who helps That's us. Good. That's good, bro. So we want to pray for one another and help each other in that way. Paul encourages us 
the church towards intercessory prayer. Listen to what he writes in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. If you have a copy of God's word, I want you to go to Colossians because that's where we're headed. This will be our first point found in Colossians. So go to Colossians chapter 1 and hold your finger there. But in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, Paul urges us, Glenn, towards intercessory prayer. He says this, Therefore, I urge, first of all, that petitions, prayers, requests, and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all people. Yes. Alejandro, included in all people, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, sir. It includes all people, non-Christians included, right? It includes governing authorities, which is the context of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. But all people includes us as well. Yes, sir. Yes. So Paul is saying, I want you to make all petitions and all requests and all prayers, they be made on behalf of all people, and that includes brothers and sisters in Christ. So we need to be sure that we're making our requests for one another known to God in prayer. But what exactly then should we as brothers and sisters in Christ here at Harvest be praying for one another about? It's a great, great question. Y'all smart. (laughs) You is smart. (laughs) There are at least four requests that I want to show you today. In scripture, where we ought to pray to God, and what we ought to pray to God about in relationship to one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Here's the first one. First, we need to pray for personal fullness and application of the knowledge of the will of God yeah, man. That's good, bro. for one another. I wanted you to see that just for a moment. We need, we need to pray, according to Colossians 1, verses 9 through 11, For one another, for personal fullness and application of the knowledge of the will of God. Let's let's take it slowly again. Pray for one another that God will allow us to have personal fullness and application of the knowledge of the will of God. So here's an observable life principle. What we are filled with will flow from our lives. Think about this with me. Think about that with me. There are some people who can tell you all about the cowboys. (laughs) Hold your horses. Don't get don't get offended. They can tell you all about the coaches. They know every one of them. They know all the players. I mean, they know the Cowboys so well, they even know the second string players that don't get much playing time. They, they, they know the Cowboys in and out. They can tell you the, their, their, their record from two and three seasons ago. Some people know the Cowboys so well, or you can put any professional team so well, they, they know the plays they are calling and that they are running. I know they're not about to do that run play to Zeke. I know they're not. And you know, you watch them, you know them so well, you, you know their playbook without even seeing their playbook. You even know their playing call style, their play call style. You know, you know if, they, if they like to run or if they like to pass. You, you even know that. And the reason why people know so much about the Cowboys, for avid fans of the Cowboys, is because they eat, sleep, and drink everything Cowboys related. Yes, sir. Yes. If that didn't hit you, think about yourself in other terms. There are some of you who can rattle off law enforcement codes in your sleep. There are others of you, you can name every part on a car or a motorcycle. You can identify all types of guns by just simply looking at them. That is a Smith & Wesson or MP M2.0. It has a 4.25 inch barrel with optic height, titanium night sights on it. 
And I had to read it. Some of y'all knew it just by looking at it. <laughs> Let somebody start a conversation with you about the military. You ain't got to read no book about it because you read everything about it. You've been trained on it. You've been to boot camp. You've lived it. Let somebody start a conversation with you about politics. Oh, you can go all day. Let somebody start a conversation about business or financial literacy or accounting or real estate or education. You name it, they will probably have to stop you from talking. Why? Because you are filled with that knowledge. Yes, sir. Yes. You love, you live, and you breathe in that stuff all the time. Now, take your eyes to Colossians chapter 1 with me. Look at verse 9. Watch what Paul prays. He says, and so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you. You see the intercessory prayer? We pray for the church. We pray for you, one another. Here's what we pray, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Paul says, this is what we, one of the things we should be praying to God about for yes. one another. Yes. That we will be filled with the knowledge of the will of God. I, I got you. What, what is the will of God? The, the will of God, here it is, is found in the word of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes. to be filled with the knowledge of the will of God is to be filled with the knowledge of the word of God. Yes, sir. So we need to pray this for one another on a regular basis, because honestly, our lives, y'all, are easily filled with other things than the knowledge of the will of God. Yes, sir. I.e., yes. the word of God. Yes. Our lives are full of busyness. Our lives are full of materialism. Our lives can be filled with all kinds of idolatry. Idolatry of sports, idolatry of ourselves, our, our own desires, idolatry of tons of things. Our lives are filled with sinful pleasures. Yes. Our lives are filled with love of money, love of success, love of prominence, love of fame. Our lives are full of intoxication intoxicated by alcohol, intoxicated with drugs. Our lives are full of laziness or selfish ambition or, as we say colloquially, our lives are also full of baloney. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're just insincere. Our lives are full of lies and deceit and manipulation. Our lives can be full of anger or unhealthy distractions or anxiety or full of pettiness. Yes, sir. Full of ourselves. Yes, sir. Yes. Instead of being filled and full of all that other stuff, Paul says we need to pray for one another to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. We yes. need to be full of the Bible. If someone cut us, we should bleed Bible. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm not saying that we should be able to simply and merely quote Bible verses from memory, although that is not bad. But what I am saying is with this image of bleeding the Bible is that we should be consumed with it yes, and by it so much so that it is a part of who we are. Yes, sir. The Bible, here it is, should be a necessity in our lives, not an accessory to our lives. I need you to put that up, CJ, so they can see it. The Bible should be a necessity. You got it? The Bible should be a necessity in our lives, not an accessory to our lives. You know, an accessory is something that you can go with or without. Yeah, yeah. I can put on this earring or earrings... I can go with them or I can go without them. Don't really matter. I can put on this necklace or this, or this bracelet 
I can go with it, or I can do it without it. Yeah, yeah. But a necessity is different. Yes, sir. A necessity is like me waking up, Chris and Jackie, and I I, I need to put my contacts in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's not an accessory. Yes, sir. Because if I go out of the house without them, somebody yeah, that's right. Somebody is in trouble today. My, I'm in trouble, and somebody else is in trouble. It's yes, it's the Bible is not an accessory. It should be a necessity. Yes, sir. But Paul adds a couple of things at the end of verse 9 that are essential to this first request. He says, I hope you see it, we need to pray for one another to be filled with the knowledge of his will. What, what's the next section? In all wisdom and spiritual insight. Yes, sir. What does that mean? What does wisdom and spiritual insight mean? It means this. It is the application of God's truth to our lives. Yes. That is what Wisdom and spiritual insight is. We, we need to pray for one another, if I can put it this way, to know and live the Bible. James tells us not to be hearers of the word only, yes, sir. but to be doers yes, sir. of the word. We need to put the Bible into practice in our lives. This is a part of what we need to pray for one another. We need to love God and neighbor like the Bible says. Yes, sir. We need to live our singleness like the Bible says. We need to, wives, you need to respect your husbands like the Bible says. Yes, sir. Husbands, you need to love your wives like the Bible says. Children, obey your parents like the Bible says. Submit to governing authorities like the Bible says. Forgive like the Bible says. Love your enemies like the Bible says. Appreciate and submit to your church's pastors or, and other ministry leaders like the Bible says. Be a Christ-like servant leader like the Bible says. We don't just need to know the Bible. We need to pray for each other to live the Bible. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. In all spiritual insight and wisdom, Paul says. Fill, pray for each other to be filled up with the knowledge of God's will, that is, i.e., the Bible, so that we can know it and we can also live it. Good. The Bible's not going to do you any good, it's not going to do us any good, family, if we just know it cognitively. Yes, sir. Yes. You, you also need to live it experientially. Yes, sir. That's good. Mm hmm. The Bible is a book that we should be doing, not just knowing. Yes, sir. But you need to know it to know what you need to do. <laughs> so the challenge here is to pray again, to pray for one another, because some of us, we struggle with knowing the Bible. And we need to pray for one another that God will give us a desire, a hunger to know the Bible. And to avail ourselves to, to the Bible personally, but also corporately or in the church. Whenever the Bible is central and whenever the Bible is open and faithfully taught and exposited and preached on, like, like God, give us a hunger yes, sir. to want to know you through the, in your scripture, through yes, the Bible. Sir. Yes, sir. I want to know your will. For what purpose or to what end should we seek to know and live the Bible? Y'all asking good questions this morning. <laughs> Look with me in verse 10. I want you to see it yourself. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. Why should you want to know and live the Bible? Because it's pleasing to Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That should be our all-consuming passion, Jamil, is that we want our lives, all of it, yes, sir. not just a portion of it, all of our lives to be pleasing to our Savior, yes, sir. the Lord Jesus Christ, pleasing to him. So we need to be praying for one another about, Lord, help us to want to know and live the Bible in order that we might be pleasing to you. Watch this. He didn't say that we might be accepted by God. Come on, brother. 
Because we're already accepted by God because of Jesus. Yes, sir. We want to be pleasing unto him. Now that we belong to him, we want to live in a way that brings him honor and brings him glory and that makes him smile. We need to pray this for one another continually. You notice in verse 9 that Paul says, we have not ceased to pray for you about this. Y'all, this, this ain't a one-time prayer. Yes. We need to be praying for this for one another all the time. Yes, sir. All the time. Watch it. And we got to pray about it, hear it, because we need, we need the Holy Spirit's help in order for us to achieve this. Because we can't do this in our own strength. We can't love our neighbors like, like God wants us to in our own strength. Yes, sir. We can't be kind to one another like God wants us to in our own strength. We can't be patient with one another. You leave it up to me, man, I would have, I would have, listen, I would have folded up my little Bible and took, put, took my iPad and left harvest a long time ago. Somebody else can pastor this church. Y'all look at, yo, don't judge me like that because y'all, y'all struggle with impatience too. You and I need the Holy Spirit's help. This is why we have to pray. Y'all, God ain't just expecting us to exert the energy in and of ourselves and to drum up the energy to live godly. The Holy Spirit is in our lives permanently. Part of his role is to help us to walk and live in a way that honors Jesus. Yes, sir. So let me, tell, let me just encourage somebody that's in the room. Like, like you need to stop trying to live. That's why you're failing. Because you're trying to think. You think God has put this. It's all on you. And God's just sitting back with his arms folded. I'm just going to see how you're going to get on that bike and ride it by yourself. Good luck. And God is like, no, he's giving us the Holy Spirit, right, to, to be with us, to have his hand on the bicycle seat yes, and his hand on the, 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 the handlebars to help us guide us down the road. Yes, sir. And he never lets go. He's always there to help guide us, to help strengthen us, to help us live this life the way that God desires for us to live it. So pray for one another. We need to pray for one another as it relates to personal fullness and application of the knowledge of God's will. Here's the second request. Y'all okay this morning? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. All right. Some of y'all look hungry. It's okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to make it through. All right. Second one is pray for opportunities to clearly share the gospel of Jesus to non-Christians. This is in Colossians chapter 4. So as you go there... There has been a recent resurgence of interest amongst Christians in terms of seeking to discover our purpose in life. Every way you turn, recently, this is not a new thing, but every way you turn, believers are talking about purpose. Do you know your purpose? What's your purpose? Yeah. What, what are you here on this earth to do? Every way you turn, everybody is talking about purpose. And what we tend to mean by this faith is when we say we're seeking our God-given purpose in our Christian communities, this is what we tend to mean by that. We, we tend to mean that, that, that believers are desiring, we're desiring to know how God has personally wired and gifted us yes. so that we know what we need to spend the rest of our lives doing. And this is usually in reference to like our college degree concentration, right? Or our vocation or career path or causes that we need to give ourselves to. And I am sure, hear me, that there's a place for those things. Well, we as believers need to seek out, you know, God's personal purpose and his will for our lives and go, Lord, you know, do you want me to take this job? Do you want me to go on this career path? Do you want me to get this degree? Do you want me to get this training? I'm, I'm sure that there's a place for that. Yes. But hear this. What I think many of us as Christians don't know or are forgetting is that our fundamental core purposes yes. for our lives have already been laid out for us by God in the Bible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Hear what I said. Our core purposes, our fundamental purposes that God has for our lives has already been given to us in the Bible. Yes, sir. Let me say it this way. This is a pen. I'm not chasing this rabbit, but I feel like I need to say this right here. Some of us, 
we are spending so much time trying to seek like this personal kind of this nebulous kind of arena of life where it's like, God, I need you to speak to my heart and tell me what I need to do with my life. We're so consumed with that that we're ignoring the clear purposes he's already given to us in the scripture. My, my. Yes. Sir. Like we're saying, I'm not saying that you shouldn't seek God for that, but not at the exclusion of what he's already told you to do. Yes, sir. So why are you seeking and praying for this? You, you need to be committed to the church because that's what he told you to do. Why are you seeking and waiting for God to yes, tell sir. you what job or career you need to go on? You need to go on and do what he told you to do in the Bible. This is his clear purposes for our lives. Yes, sir. All right, I'm all for that. I'm let that rabbit keep running. One of the core purposes that God has given to us, this is where you need to go to in your Bible. Turn to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Some of you say, what, what has God called me to do? What's my purpose? Here's one of his core purposes. It's in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses yes. Yes. in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. We have been called or purposed by God to be witnesses yes, sir. of Jesus. Yes. Yes. This is one of God's core purposes for your life and for mine. God has purposed you, purposed me to be a witness for Jesus. When we are saved, when we become a Christian, when we place our trust in Jesus and his perfect life and his death on the cross for our sins, his resurrection from the dead, when we become a child of God through faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit permanently indwells us, and he also, not it, he... Yes, sir. Also, whenever you refer to the Holy Spirit, harvest, don't refer to the Holy Spirit as an it. Yes, sir. Theologically, yes, the Holy sir. Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Yes, third sir. person of the Trinity, not yes, power. He is a person. He indwells us. Yes, sir. But he also empowers us to do what? To tell other people about Jesus. I hope you resonate with that. As you try to figure out this stuff and you walk with God and you seek direction and guidance for all of the, 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 the nuances of your life, understand the core purpose, one of the core purposes of all that. Whew, hear me, somebody. The core purpose for all of this is for you to display Jesus and witness for Jesus with all of this. Yes, sir. Yes. So, 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 so if he's calling you to, to start your own business is not just so you can make money on, or so that you can be the CEO on, or the one in charge or you don't have to work a nine to five so you can have a flex schedule and so you can go and eat brunch with your sir. friends whenever you want to and be your own boss. It's so that you can be a witness somehow in that industry. Yes, sir. The witness of Jesus in, here, in that industry. You in here. So through your work, you want to give a witness to Jesus. How you run your business gives a witness to Jesus. How you, how you operate and, and, and handle your books speaks of a witness to Jesus. Some of us, man, we, 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 we've got to grow up. Yes, sir. We let the world kind of form us and shape us into why we want to pursue certain things. I won't do that because, you, know, you know, internally and, 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 and as it, you know, under the cut, you know, as quiet as it's kept, I want, I want my own Maybach or Maybach. <laughs> I want my own mansion. Right, right. I want to be able to fly to exclusive islands and, and you know, sip my ties all day. Yep. I want to be known. I want my stuff to go viral. I want people, you know, to flood my, my social media accounts. I want my name in lights. And listen, if that happens, hear me, family, the only reason why it's happening is so that that can be a platform yes, sir. for you to be a witness of Jesus. Yes. 
We've been commissioned by God to go and tell the world. That's your core purpose. That's one of my core purposes. That's one of God's core purposes for us. And we need to be praying for God to help us lean into that. It's got to be a witness to go and tell the world about the good news of Jesus. Hear me. Not to tell the world that Jesus is merely a great teacher whose teachings you should incorporate into your life. Yes, yes. Because you got plenty of people who's doing that already. Our, our, our role, our purpose is not, is not to, to, to be filled up and pray for one another, to go into the world, to tell people about Jesus being merely a great prophet who spoke boldly for God and he performed miracles and healings and he's somebody who we should emulate and we should admire. Our goal is not as witnesses of Jesus to go into the world and tell people that Jesus is merely a good person who went around doing good and he was very philanthropic and he brought light and love to other people as if Jesus Jesus is a hippie. Right, right. Peace and love. Can you imagine some people view Jesus like that? That that's, you know, Jesus with the bell bottoms. You feel me? (laughs) The tie-dye shirt. Walking around, just giving peace and love to everybody. Right. Peace. You just you can do whatever you want to do. You know, you can. It's, it's the it's sexual freedom, sexual revolution. You can just do. I ain't here to. I ain't here to rain on y'all parade. Peace and love, baby. Do what you want to do. That ain't. That's not. That's not the Jesus we're being witnesses yes, sir. of. Yes, sir. We are called to go out into the world and tell people that God the Son came in the flesh. He was born of a virgin Mary, the eternal son of God. He was not created. He was not born. He was not in that way. He didn't come into existence at Mary's, at Mary's impregnation yes, and her birthing of him. Jesus yes, have always existed. On, eternal son of God yes, who sir. became flesh. Yes, that is yes, incarnated, came yes, through the womb of Mary who was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. He came into this world. Yes, he came to live a perfect life for us to show us that he himself was the king of the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God had draw, has drawn near in him. And he had come to not just live a perfect life for us, but to also head to the cross of Calvary to die for our sins, to be buried in a grave, to rise from the dead on the third day. And he then ascended to the right hand of his father where he awaits to come again to receive those of us who claim him as Savior and Lord and to mete out eternal judgment against those who have not. That's my friends, my brothers and sisters, is the good news of Jesus. Yes, sir. That is what we are supposed to be witnesses to. Yes, sir. And we're telling people that God in Christ came to reconcile people back to himself. That's why he came. He didn't come to get you out of poverty, per se. He didn't come to deliver you from governmental oppression. He didn't come for those things. Does Jesus do some of those things? Sure. In his own priority, in his own prerogative, in his own discretion, he may do those things. But his primary purpose for coming was to reconcile us back to God the Father through his perfect life and death and resurrection. He came to give us peace with God because we were enemies and sinners enemies of God and sinners. Do you know that's the reason why our world is broken? Do you know that's the reason why, ultimately, the reason why you can have a teenager that wakes up one day and they just randomly decides to kill five people? Mama, help us. You know that's why we struggle, you and I struggle with lust and pride and anger and self-righteousness is because we, at the core are sinners. We've been created in the image of God. Yes, we were created good and innocent initially by God, but once Adam ate that fruit, we fell into sin. And everybody who comes from Adam is a natural born sinner. You ain't got to teach nobody to sin because we already know how to do it. 
And our most desperate, most, most important, most significant need is to be reconciled to God. And he has given us a charge to be witnesses of that. So as the world continues to grow more and more hostile towards Christians, we need to pray for one another to clearly and boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus. As false prophets and false teachers and false religions, even you have those who come under the banner, they pretend to be Christian yeah. churches, yeah. but are led by false pastors. As they continue to be deceived and to deceive people, may we pray for one another that God will help us to be unashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Let us pray that God will grant us opportunities in our families. He'll give us opportunities in our neighborhoods, on our jobs, at the store, to allow our paths to cross with non-Christians so that we might open our mouths and give witness to the glorious good news of our God and Savior, Jesus. Yes, sir. Thank because he is the only one that can make us and makes us right with God. Yes, sir. I hope y'all are hearing this, family. Jesus said it himself, I am the way. He didn't say, I am a way. Come on, man. Come on. He didn't say, I am a truth. He says, I am the truth. He didn't say, I am a life. He says, I am the life. And he said out of his very mouth that nobody comes to the Father except through me. Can't nobody get to God the Father unless they come through me. You can't go through Buddha. You can't go through Muhammad. You can't go through yes, anybody sir. else to get to the Father. Only through Christ yes, sir. can we access the Father and have access to the Father and be in a right relationship with the Father. Yes, sir. And we need to pray that God helps us to be unashamed about that, even amongst your family. You got sin uh, you know, people in your family. They are re religious syncretists. Well, they, 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 just got, they just got all kind of stuff in their gumbo. They spiritual gumbo. They, they'll say, I ain't religious, I'm spiritual. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you, know, I, I, you know, I got a little bit of Christianity, and then I got a little bit of African spirituality, and I got a little bit of of this, and then I got a little bit of that, and I got a little bit of Roman Catholicism, and I got a little bit of this, and I got a little bit of that, and then I got a little bit of atheism, and I got a little bit of agnosticism. I mean, I, I'm just got it all mixed up, and I don't just believe they have, and we love her, but I only say this because it's public, they have a Oprah kind of theology. Sir. It's an Oprah kind of religion where yes, there's not just one way to God. There are many anyway. paths to God. You can get to God any way you like. It's a Steve Harvey kind of a yes, sir. religion. Yes, sir. Well, you feel like you make exceptions and you can get to God any way you choose, any way you want to get to God. And, and if that way is Jesus, cool, that, that's good for you. If that, if that way is whatever, your own makeup of, you know, God and all this stuff, religious, spiritual stuff, if that's your own kind of concoction, then that's good, too. Jesus says, absolutely not. Absolutely. There's one way. And I'm that way. Yes, yes. And we need to be witnesses of that. Yes. Regardless of what the world says. Yes, sir. Regardless of how they persecute us, regardless of how they say that y'all are just, y'all are just ignorant and y'all, how can you claim such exclusivity? Like that doesn't even make sense. Y'all, that's pretty, that's pretty prideful of you all. You think y'all are better than everybody else. You think your way is the only way. And what we're saying is, no, I don't think that this is what God has told us in his Bible, in his word, his self revelation. This is what he has told us is the truth. Yes, sir. And if we love people, we'll be truthful with them. Yeah. Yes, even if they don't like it. Yes, sir. Here's the third request we need to pray for one another about. We need to pray for spiritual resistance against the devil and his evil forces. Yes, sir. Go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. We're almost done. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. This is in the context, some of y'all will know this, it's a spiritual warfare passage. It's the armor of God passage. Yes, sir. And at the end of this, Paul says, look with me in verse 18, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication. What, what does it say? Who should we be making supplication for at the end of verse 18? 
All the saints. All the saints. Yes, sir. All the saints, yes, universally, but all the saints, especially locally here at Harvest. Pray for one another that we, that God will grant us spiritual resistance against the devil and his evil forces. Do y'all remember the imagery that Peter used in 1 Peter to describe the devil? Y'all remember this? Come on, man. Think about it. He said, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Yes, sir. Yes. Y'all, the devil and his wicked imps are real. Yes, sir. And they are not playing with us. Yes, sir. Sir. The devil ain't trying to pull up on you like Celia in the color purple <laughs> and her sister and want to play patty cake. We, it's He not, he not trying to, you know, he's not trying to stay, play thumb war with you, pencil break, airplane, chess checkers. He's not trying to just hang out with you to have brunch. Right. Wants to see you flourish and, and, and do all that God wants you to be. No, the Bible calls him an adversary. Yes, sir. The Bible actually says your adversary. Our adversary. He's an enemy. He is an opponent, and he is seeking to destroy your witness for Jesus. Yes, sir. And my witness for Jesus. He can't touch our salvation because we're secure in Jesus. Yes, sir. But what he can try to tempt and touch and destroy is our life here on this earth. He know he can't touch our soul. He know he can't touch our eternity. He can't touch our salvation because we are secure in Jesus. But he wants to try to destroy your devotion to Jesus. Yes, sir. He wants to try to devour your commitment to the local church. He wants to try to devour your marriage. He wants to devour your singleness. Yes, he wants to devour your children. He is not playing games with us. We think sometimes we live, sometimes we don't, we may not think it, but we live like the devil is playing hopscotch with us. Come on outside, you throw the stone first. Oh, uh, uh, uh. and then like, like the devil wants to do double dutch, right? He's on one end and you on the other, and he's just smiling. You know what it's more like? It's more like Nightmare on Elm Street. You remember them, you remember yes, them little girls or Freddy Krueger? Yes, you remember sir. them little girls? One, two, Freddy's coming for her. Yes, sir. That's how it is. Yeah, I mean, serious, that's, yes, that's what it's like. Yes, sir. That's so apropos to him because he seeks to disguise himself yes, like a Halloween. He seeks to disguise himself as an angel of light to deceive us and trick us. He, the, devil, the devil is a master at lying. He is, he is cunning. He is deceitful. That's how he attacks. He primarily attacks through deceit. Sir, sir. Where he mixes lies into truth and truth in with lies and, and he'll give you a little bit of truth mixed with a little bit a lie and it sounds good but it ain't good did God really say Eve that you couldn't eat from this tree Come on, oh yeah God says we couldn't eat from this tree she added to it though she's like don't no, no, touch it lest we'll die and then the devil says what you shall not surely die Lies. That's what he does. He has schemes. Y'all know that word it means strategies. The devil ain't playing checkers with us. He, he's playing chess. Yes, sir. And strategies. He's not all powerful like our God, but he ain't dumb either. You know, he has, Chris, he has, he has a lot of history. He's, he's, got a lot of, he's got a lot of data to go by in terms of human data, in terms of how we operate and the things that tempt us. He has a lot of data on you. Y'all better hear God clearly. He has a lot of data on you. Who? See, we think angels, we think angels, right, are incompetent. They deaf and dumb. But these fallen angels 
are, have been, they were initially created by God to be good angels. There was a portion of them that fell, became fallen angels, as we know as demons and the devil, right? But, the, but angels, demons, can hear. And they watch. And they listen. They're not, they're not dumb. They, they, they know. They saw you when you were in high school. They were there. They saw you in middle school. They saw your family upbringing. They saw, they saw it all. So they have data. They know what your family issues are. They know what triggers you have. They, they, they know because, not because they're omniscient, it's because they, they see it in real time. They, don't, they, they, they have to learn stuff, but, 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 they, but they're, not, they're, they're not ignorant. And this is why we have to be praying for one another. So we can, because in Christ we have the victory over the enemy and all of his little imps. And God has made known, he has, he has unveiled his tactics to us. You, 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 you know, that's, that's, that we serve a bad God, bro. bad isn't good. We serve a good God. He got, got, the devil can't outmaster God. Right. Right. So you know, you know what he did? He, you, know, you know, he basically has laid the devil's controller out for us to see. You know, there's video, video games, whatever, times that, you know, in certain video games, you have to push a certain button or you have to do a certain thing, and you have to hide it from, the, from your opposing player because if they see you do a certain thing, they, they can tell what move you're going to make. You see, the devil, what God has done, he's exposed his controller to us, and he's shown us his moves. He's given us his game plan. He's given us his schemes so that we wouldn't be ignorant of them. Yes, sir. Yes. He's given us the Bible. His schemes are, are, plan, are laid out in the Bible. We, we can see his strategies. Watch this. And God has given us the local body. Yes, sir. Hear me, somebody. He's given us brothers and sisters in Christ who can come alongside of us and help us identify the strategies of the enemy. Because some of us, we've been there and we've fallen prey to it. And so we're able. This is why you shouldn't divorce yourself from the church body, from your local church family, because they can help you spot the lion that's in the grass. And you don't see him. You ain't well versed in spiritual warfare yet, but we can see him. We know where he's lurking. We know his tactics. We know he'll show something over here, but he's really over there. And he'll, he'll, he'll put um, uh, ice over a blade and put blood on it. And you're thinking that it's something good for you, but when you get down to it, it's going to cut your tongue and cause you to bleed out. That boy, that girl is a, is a blade with blood on it. Sir. That dude that you just fallen head over heels for, he may look good, but it's, he, he is a blade with ice with blood on it. Y'all, y'all, listen. Yo, that well, thank you, Jackie, is, it ain't in a good spot. That ain't a good spot to put your relational well down in because we didn't seen this before. Okay, I got I got to close. We we we've seen the enemy's strategies before. We need to pray for one another that we can stand and resist him in Christ. All right, here, here's the final one. Here's the final one. Here's the final request we need to pray for one another about. We need to pray. It's real simple. We need to pray for healing. It's the last scripture, James chapter 5, verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, the immediate context of this passage is speaking about physical healing. If you go up to verse 14, it says, if anyone among you is sick, this is somebody that's like bedridden, more than likely, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. So you can see the context is around physical healing. And I know, hear me, hear me, family, I know we rightly can get skittish about this particular subject matter. So let me, let me tread carefully as I, as, I, as I start to wrap this sermon up. We should 
and hear well, we should pray for physical healing. We should. Because sometimes, you know, depending on what our experience has been or depending on maybe what church we were a part of, maybe a certain stripe of a different church, and maybe there was a lot of praying for healing going on and we got kind of jaded because we didn't maybe not see a whole lot of healing happening. At least, at least in, maybe in some of those contexts with faith healers and people laying hands on people and, and et cetera, et cetera. But just because you have maybe some misuses and abuses doesn't mean that we should stop praying for healing. Yes, sir. Yes. Because here's the truth. Our God is able to heal. Yes, sir. Physically. Yes, he is. He, he, he is able. But notice, the Bible says, pray, pray for, for it. it. Yes. That is, ask. Yes. The implica- Come on, y'all. The implication is... It's up to God whether to say yes or no. Yes, sir. But, I, but we can still ask. Yes, sir. This is where we get it mixed up and where we get confused because some people say we can demand of God. We can declare. We can decree anything. No, 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 no. No, the Bible tells us to pray yes, sir. to God and ask him yes, sir. for it and to leave the answer up to him. But we still need to ask. Yes, sir. I need to give you an example of this. One of our members suffered very serious physical trauma a couple of weeks ago. At the time that this medical physical trauma happened to this particular member, that particular member was in serious condition. Yes, sir. A past Pastor Brooks sent out a prayer request, asked us to pray for this particular member. And because of God's grace working through the means of your prayers, sir, sir. We, we can say today at this moment that our dear member is recovering well and regaining strength and mental acuity. Don't miss it. It's because God's grace working in us to pray for this particular member that God answered that those prayers. And he is healing this particular member. You, you, you don't have to even, you, if that don't get you, look at your own life. Look, look at the times that other people have prayed for you when you were sick. And God in his sovereignty and in his grace decided through the means of their prayer to heal you of your sickness. Uh-huh. Y'all must have never been sick in your life because I don't, I don't know how... Some of y'all are looking at me and you ain't smiling. I ain't got a, I ain't got a twinkle in your eye. I ain't got a wink because I will testify this more. I have been sick in my body plenty of times, but it's by God's grace through the prayers of the saints that God responded in healing in my physical body. Yeah. Um, but I want you to see something here. You got to read this carefully. You got you to read it carefully. The prayer of faith, verse 15, will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Notice that not all sicknesses are a direct result of sin. Read the Bible. If he has or she has committed sin. Because some of us think every sickness that come, you we must have done something sinful. No, 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 no. That's not. Sometimes it's because you just live in a sinful world, yes, a broken world that we experience physical sickness in our body. Yes, not because of personal sin that we have committed. And, and yet, the Bible seems to say that there are 
can be. Some sicknesses, again, if he has committed sins, some sicknesses that can be a direct result of sinful choices yes, and or consequences. Yes, but what I want you to see also, because if you get to verse 16, and this is where we'll land this plane, he says, therefore, confess your sins yes, to sir. one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The immediate context is physical healing, but watch it. I think also that what James has in mind is not just physical sickness, but also spiritual sickness. That there are mal maladies of the body, but there's also maladies of the soul. Like we, listen, we've been healed completely spiritually by Jesus. But how many of you know that you can physically, you can still catch a cold even though you're healthy? Yes, sir. There are times you still can get a cold. There are times you still can have you know, a sinus infection. There's still things that you can catch, yes, right? You can catch. Well, in some ways, it's not an exact parallel. In some ways, there, there, are, there are spiritual sicknesses. It doesn't mean that you are, are, are completely spiritually ill or sick where that is you're not redeemed. You, you are a believer but there are times, let me put it like this, Paul says that we can get caught in a trespass. There are spiritual bondages that we even as believers can get caught up in. There's spiritual sickness that we can, that we can exhibit and have if we're not careful. Yes, sir. So James is saying here, listen, y'all need to pray for healing physical healing, but you also hear this need to pray for one another related to spiritual healing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because spiritual sickness is real. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. It, it looks like hang-ups. It looks like habits. Sinful habits that you and I have. Yes, sir. Sinful things that, that we are struggling with. Yes, sir. Yes. I don't know if anybody hearing me uh, in this building. Sir. There are, there are, there are all of us. I mean, you may not have the flu, but you still got a cough. I mean, you may not be, watch this. Thank God that you're not as sick in that, spiritually sick in that area as you used to be. Yes, sir. But there are times you still got a cough. Are y'all tracking, tracking with the analogy? There are still things that we need to be praying for one another as it relates to spiritual illnesses, that God will heal us from our lust, that God will heal us from our selfish ambition, that God will heal us from our gossip and tongue, that God will heal us yes, sir. Yes, sir. from this. Yes. And thanks be to God that when we pray, Sometimes for physical healing, God has his own sovereign purpose to that, and sometimes he doesn't necessarily heal because he's maybe like a Paul situation where there's a thorn and God has a purpose for it, and, and maybe other things where God's just going to sustain you physically in it, may not necessarily heal you of it, but he wants to show his grace in you and his strength in you, right? Right? That's, that's there. But watch this. When it comes to spiritual healing, healing is always available. Yes, sir. It's always available. God always wants to heal us of our spiritual maladies, right? But we have to pray for one another that God God would help us and confess our sins is what he says. See, we have to confess it so we can pray to God for that and so that we can be healed from those sins. So we need to pray for one another. That's what a good family does. Amen? So if there's somebody here, if, if you need to trust Christ, we want to encourage you to make that decision today. If you're here and you're a Christian and you've never been baptized, you never went public with your faith through water baptism, um, that's an obedient step that we pray that you'll make today. If you're here and you are not a part of our local church family, you've been praying, maybe you've been visiting for a number of times, maybe, maybe this is your first time, you know God is putting this, putting this on your heart, that you need to become a member of this local church family. It's okay for you to be in transition, but you know one of the main animals um, that tend to get devoured by a lion are the ones that get away from the pack. Mm -hmm. 
The ones that are straying away behind the pack. There's safety, spiritual safety, in the body of Christ, in the local church family. And we don't want you to be roaming out here by yourself because you need people to pray for you so that you won't become prey. You catch that. We need to pray so we won't become prey. So you need to be a part of a local church family. Not just become a member, but become an active, participating member of this local church family so that we can be praying for you and you can be praying for us. So we pray that you'll make that those, any one of those decisions today. Uh, we're praying for you. We're going to pray as we for you, and then we're going to pray for the offering as we worship the Lord and give it. Father, thank you so much for those who will make decisions today. Uh, we thank you for allowing us to worship you and giving. Pray that you will help us to give our first and our best back to you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.